Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. Hi, you're at the Pollock Krasner House and Study Center. This is where Jackson Pollock and Lee Krasner, two famous artists, lived and worked uh, from 1945 until their deaths. It's a combination of their living and working environment. We don't have their art. This is not an art museum. Uh, you'd have to go to the Museum of Modern Art and Metropolitan and other places to see that work. But what we do have is the place that inspired them. When he and Lee first came out here, she got the idea that maybe they should get a winter rental just to get away from the city. But he didn't think that was a good idea because he knew that the city was where his career was. I mean, there were no art galleries out here, no dealers, no collectors. After Labor Day, he realized that it might be better if he did get away from things just to be able to kind of detoxify and concentrate on work. But he thought he'd like to move out here permanently, which seemed totally crazy to Lee because they didn't have any money to buy a house. They found it from Peggy Guggenheim, who was his dealer and his patron. And uh, Lee worked downstairs um, near the stove in the back parlor. And Jackson had this small, like a upstairs bedroom that he used as a studio. And it's quite small, it's about 10 by 14 feet, but it has a lovely view over the creek, so the light in there is quite nice. And he was very productive in that space. The view was very important to both of them. And even though they weren't landscape painters, they really responded to the environment. So having a building right in the middle of the view was not the ideal location, let's put it that way. Because it's a small studio or small barn, they were able to jack it up and just kind of drag it over to where it is now. It's about 25 or 30 yards north of its original spot. When Jackson first worked in the building from 1946 after it was moved, it didn't have a, a concrete floor anymore, it had a wood floor. The building had no heat and no electricity. In 1953, he renovated it and put in a covering on the floor made out of masonite. When Lee died in 1984 and her property was deeded to Stony Brook University, they lifted the masonite and that was discovered by my predecessor who was the first director, Meg Perlman. And she saw that there was all this color and gesture all over the floor, so she had conservators come in and remove all of the masonite and then underneath it was a layer of tar paper and that was taken up as well. If it were an actual Pollock painting, you really wouldn't be able to walk on it. <laughs> it's not really a work of art. It's more of a document because it's completely random. See, Pollock's works are composed. Even though he was doing it spontaneously, it was improvisational, he was actually making a composition out of the gestures. But these gestures on the floor are just whatever fell off the edge. And it's, it covers a six year period. They look like this should be easy to get on. Get these. <laughs> If they prefer to really go in and see it properly, they take their shoes off and put the slippers on, and the slippers protect the floor surface. Oh, wow, is this something to walk on where you paint it? You're dripped. In the spring and the fall, we're open by appointment only. But in June, July, and August, during the peak season, we have open hours in the afternoon, and we do one guided tour at noon. But from one to five, people can come in, just pay $5, and take the self-guided tour. 